Hi everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I am having a fall brisk day. It is cold and damp and look at behind me. I've started out, there was a break in the rain. We we're supposed to get rain every hour all day today. I decided I really need to get this rhubarb wrapped up, canned and made into jams and pies. Can it for future pies for the winter time and put this rhubarb patch to rest. So let me turn around the camera and show you what I've already done. Now I think I've probably got about a 30 to 40 foot row of rhubarb plants. I don't even remember how many plants I have total. I've been doing some divides all year. If you watch back into our homesteading uh, videos through the year, I have been dividing some of these off and selling them as starter plants to some other um, gardening experts, beginners and whatnot. Uh, it's really hard to get rhubarb plants at a nursery beyond springtime and they're a good you know 10 to 18 bucks a piece. I picked up these plastic crates for picking produce many years ago and they work great for rhubarb because I can cut it in whatever length I need throw it in there. I'm actually going to hose this off right out here to help keep some of that grass clipping out of it. Traded some mowing the other day and what I'd really like to do is get this fertilized for winter and put it down. So when you are doing rhubarb, if you've ever seen uh, little holes in your rhubarb, we've talked about that, there is a rhubarb weevil and they nibble on uh, your rhubarb. Later in the season, it's not so bad. Uh, earlier in the season, you get quite a bit more of this and sometimes you get just downright holes. Well, they actually can lay their larva in there and leave a goo on it. So I had a little problem with that early in the year and I just got busy doing other things. We treated it with DE, which is called diatomaceous earth. You can sprinkle that right on the plants. You can sprinkle it on the ground. It's fine for you. It's fine for your animals. And if you turn your chickens out here, they will scratch this all up and cultivate it for you. I've got a bit of grass growing into my rhubarb. And as you can see, this is my hand. <laughs> that is the size of a car tire. It is huge. So some of my leaves get so big that they grow way out here and Trey ends up hitting them with the lawnmower. So I try to keep it picked and trimmed up. So I've already gone through and cut my tops and bottoms off of all of my rhubarb and left piles. Now as you're working and through the year, you want to get rid of the dead leaves that are from the bottom of the plant when they start turning yellow like this, pull them out, get rid of them. Don't leave them in the ground. That is going to leave a bedding space. Um, they will actually burrow into some of this and winter over. So we wanna get rid of that. All of these cutoffs at the end, this is all gonna go into a compost pile away from the rhubarb. In the past, I was using the leaves to compost around it thinking I was helping and I didn't know. I'm no master gardener. My mom, she just planted it, let it grow, pick it, and I'll tell you, you would not get more pounds of fruit or vegetable off of anything besides an apple tree than what you get off of rhubarb. It is amazing. So right here, I've got about six plants. There's three here, four, five, six, seven plants. And these are the main ones I've been wanting to divide. They are crowded, so they always stay very skinny where my other rhubarb plants i've had some that are an inch and a half thick this is fairly newly putting out growth that's not even fully opened up yet um, we had about a 63 degree day this week mostly in the 50s and we are about two weeks from halloween we are supposed to have a frost on sunday so this is a perfect time to finish my harvest and get sorted out what I want. So I've left a lot of the plant of the uh, skinny plants above ground. Most of them I just picked back and they're done. They're gonna be completely dormant unless we get a hot spell. We have had some uh, Halloweens that were so hot that it was just uncomfortable. So when they're real hollow feeling like that, this has already been withering away and we had some cold that was near a frost and it must have done just enough damage that they didn't like it. 
so I'm pulling all this out. Now I'll go around with the push mower one more time and maybe even the spade and bring this back. If you have a garden fork to do this for you, you can pull the grass back. Um, it's a really great way to keep your garden area clear. I've got a bunch of missy chickens over here. They've just started to lay eggs yesterday for the first time and their pen needs cleaned out. That chicken manure is great for a garden. Now normally what's called hot manure or fresh is not what you want to put on your garden. We clean out the chicken coop regularly and there's a pile next to the barn of cow manure, old straw, spent hay that they you know didn't want to finish, just in general barn clean out material. And that is great for wintering your garden, wintering your raspberry plants, strawberry rhubarb. So we are going to collect some of that after we do a little bit of groundwork. And right now I'm just rinsing off my rhubarb to take it in the house. That's the nice thing about these crates. I used them for tomatoes all summer, harvesting, taking out, and I knew I was going to want to do this today or in the next couple days. It's always good if I can get some little helpers. All right. And then all that dirt's just going to run through to the bottom. And instead of doing this in my shower and filling my bathtub with grass, normally that wouldn't be a problem. It's going to just all fall through here. So now I'm going to use my yellow wagon. I picked this up at Menards a couple of years ago for about $60, $70. It has been so good for our family. And another good thing, another Menards purchase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten tine manure pitchfork. It works so good for the garden. The leaves here are so big that it's easy to clean up, but this fork uses, gets used for a lot of purposes on our farm, more than dual duty. Great. Saves you from getting all wet from a lot of the jobs. So we're just going to haul this away, throw it on a compost pile. And here, our compost, our manure, it all ends up getting spread on our fields. We have some uh, clay in very sandy areas that it really benefits uh, from that. If you don't have one, start just a corner of your uh, yard for compost. And in the springtime, when you want to plant, you'll be able to take that compost that's turned to dirt Start using it in your pots rather than going and buying bags full of compost at the store. Here's our nice compost pile. This is just next to the barn. We have cow manure that is very wet and fresh. I threw my rhubarb leaves on top of it. I've got my yellow wagon here. And this is a lot more straw with some manure. Um, it's been breaking down for a while. This pile has probably been here for about two months. So any strong amount or smell of urine is gone and I can throw this right over my asparagus and my rhubarb. It's all in the same area 
and everything will be ready for the winter. Now, some people would say, oh, you need a gator, you need a skid loader, all that. How many fat farm wives do you know that their husband goes around with the tractor doing all these little jobs? And how many healthy wives go around doing the work on their own? Not enough, I think. So part of the gardening is our health and it's that we're getting exercise from it. You can do it how you want, but this is what works for me. Physical labor. I haven't died from it yet. I won't say there's not nights where I'm laying there hurting at night, but you know what? Nice cup of hot tea. Peach passion tea is our favorite. The whole family drinks it. Just kind of have something warm inside of you and relax, sleep well. Next day comes and re repeat. Just do the whole thing over again. It's very satisfying. I said to my husband, I grew up on a homestead kind of thing until I was probably about six. And then my mom moved to the city. I always missed that life. And I got it back when we bought our farm. So here are my two tools of choice, a garden fork and a long handled cultivator. So you can cultivate around the rhubarb plant. Um, you see how I get these little bits of grass. You can see how I get these little bits of grass in here. Well, spring comes and I start pulling these out, but that doesn't really matter. There's a network of roots. So unless I get some of that root out, it's just gonna come back later in the year. So in the fall, you wanna go along, try to clean up your edges and keep those borders or boundaries going. Um, I get a little bit of hay grass growing up in here and it's real clumpy so it's easy to dig out with this garden fork. Um, it's right next to our cow fence so basically what I wanted to do is scratch the surface, turn over some of the dirt so that it will absorb those nutrients and then we're going to be using the old bedding to bed down the plants for the winter. So like me, I have an extension cord going over here to my cow fence. Watch for things that are underground if you're digging very deep. Remember where your you know, other plants are at, companion planting, things like that, you want, want to know. Because when I get further down in here and it's all grassy, this was asparagus that was planted here when we moved here. I've yet to get it under control with the grass. It's overwhelming and there's no rhyme or reason to where the plants are coming up. So the least I can do right now is start in on the rhubarb. So I'm gonna clean this up and make it a nice straight line to help get that defined boundary so that grass isn't growing into there. And at the same time, those giant leaves that I have aren't growing up into the grass and getting hit with the lawnmower. The nice thing is you do a little bit of work like this, you're gonna work up your own body heat. And the sun is actually coming out so much for every hour of rain. So now I'm just gonna gently shake this on top of my garden area. I've been going through, and if you get a nice clump of manure, you know, that's, that's good for the plant. It's, the plant is going to reach it whether it's on the plant or next to the plant. Now, like I said, it's already been raining today. So my compost is just wet from the rain. Keep that in mind. And that's why I'm giving it a good shake. I don't want to smother my plants uh, with heavy wetness there's still opportunity for them to grow to store energy in their roots for winter time so this is what you would call top dressing if you were to work it in you know you could do that I've got so much full straw that that's not really an option and it just composts further down uh, into the winter. And it's going to also help me with my weed control in the spring. So if you might have guessed, we do everything organic and old fashioned here. 
basically, with the exception of running gasoline uh, engines and diesel, a lot of things are done here the old-fashioned way, just like the Amish lights and Mennonite lights. Uh, it's a healthier living doing this work manually um, and chemical free for sure. So see, I'm just spreading it out in a nice layer, not too heavy. Uh, a lot of people will say just go buy some straw and sprinkle it on. Well, as you can see, I'm out in the country. That wind is going to blow a lot of that straw away. So spent bedding that has nutrients in it from uh, the manure and even uh, uneaten food like the hay, if grain falls in there, that's fine with me. I don't mind that. If I were to get any weeds, a lot of people say, oh, you got to have uh, totally weed free, no heads on your straw. That doesn't exist. Farmers that farm with a combine, it shoots out everything. And there's not always 100% separation between um, a wheat, barley, or rye head than the stem. So you get it from time to time. To pull that little bit of weed out is nothing. So for us right now, we're using wheat and rye straw. Um, we've had oat straw in the past because it's from our own farm, it's organic. Now that's a hard thing to find um, as far as that goes, but even if that crop had been sprayed, that's going to be better for you in the long run, long run than putting store-bought fertilizers by a chemical company on your ground because it's, you know, like broken down so much already from that, that plant's growth. It has used that supply. So just a quick note or tip, this is called curly dock and they get a kind of a red stem uh, during the summer season, but they've got this big leaf and the stems are really hard um, and they're impossible to pull. Look at this root. With that garden fork, you can pull this right out. Those rhubarb weevils are attracted to this as well. So make sure that you keep that out of your rhubarb area and I don't know why, but they seem to always go together. So doing this edging here is really beneficial to that because where my son has missed mowing and those curly dock seeds from a previous year are down, um, they really try to take off. Um, I believe, oh, I'm forgetting the common name right now, but uh, these have a terrible weed to pull too. And you can see there's seed pods on there. You want to get this out now and dispose of it. Um, that's something that'll go in a separate compost pile, what I'm doing now, and then I won't have to worry about that growing into our fields, into our cows, and then back into the garden again. So this little area here where I was just edging to maintain the edge only took me 10 minutes. I got into this other area, you can see my grass patches are much larger, and this is what I mean about that orchard grass or hay grass. A little less over there. I got real thick into it, right in here where the oldest plants were. These plants were here when we moved here, and I believe it was three plants, and I divided them a little bit. Um, at the time, I was trying to do two uh, rows up, and because of the size of the leaves that I had transplanted from my mom's place, I decided a single row was good enough, and there's seven people in my house. This is more, way more plants than what we can generally use in a year. So we sell rhubarb off for like $5 a pound, um, like two starter plants, 10 or $15, depending on the size of the start. But this was easily another hour, maybe an hour and a half. My daughter came out and said it was noon. I came out here this morning after milking the cows, probably 10.30. So total, you know, not too much time with cutting the rhubarb, cleaning it out. We're gonna go ahead and add some more bedding here and we will be done. So just by getting right to this, I had my coffee this morning, skipped my breakfast. I wasn't hungry. I came out and just decided to do this. I've got this done just before it started to rain. There's a light mist starting and this is going to start seeping into the soil. We have a three day rain period and then a frost. So the benefits 
of all this manure is going to just keep going down into the soil. If I want to top coat this another time in November, December, I can keep adding another layer as I see it breaking down. But this is a real great start or even on just a complete finish to bedding down your rhubarb for the winter. Most rainy days, a lot of people start looking online, shopping online and doing this and that. I was able to squeeze in a good job that's gonna benefit our family all of next year and for many more years to come because rhubarb is a perennial. It comes up every year, it's very hardy. I'm in Michigan in zone five, six, right on the border and it just does great. Some of this will continue to grow and we might even be able to get more. You can throw a frost blanket over it and keep going until you get a actual hard freeze. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope these tips help you with your gardening, with your adventures in homesteading, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.